Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today I'm going to be doing a quick video on Flopzilla. And for those of you that have never used Flopzilla before, it's a very, very good program. Uh, very similar to Stocks Combo, which I did, or I put in one of my equity exploration videos about a year and a half ago. Um, and Stocks Combo is a good, good, good program, don't get me wrong, but I really like Flopzilla. It runs off the same Stocks EV engine, and it's just very, very quick, has a lot of... It's very, very user-friendly right off the bat, which is what I really like about it. Very, very simple to use, and I, and I use this for a lot of my off-session analysis. So I figured I would just do a quick video on how to use it and what it's good for, blah, blah, blah. So we just pretty much have the basics, add-in starting hands, flop textures, nothing special about that. Dead cards, this is effectively what our hand is. So if we had ace-king of spades, there, there we go. That's going to be our dead card. So obviously, unless you're playing live, you know, online you don't see cards get flipped over. But if you were playing a hand live and you were running some analysis on it and a couple of dumbasses flip some hands over, you could just pop those in. Okay, um, right here, this is the, the bread and butter, what we really care about. This is simply the hand categories that we think they will continue or not continue with. So the way I do it is I tick all the ones that I think people will logically continue with, almost always. So middle pair plus, the flush draws, open-ended straight draws, and then the big draws. So those are the ones I normally just assume people aren't ever going to fold, so I just kind of leave them up there. So here, if we just wanted to do a quick example... Let's say we're dealing with someone who has an 18% range. We can just run that through there. And then we can always save it. And I keep a couple of pre-saved uh, ranges over here just for things that I like to use. So knit early position, idiot range, cold call ranges from different people, that kind of stuff. Just because when I'm running these kind of analyses, I just like to kind of have a quick idea on how it works for each cold call range that I generally work against. So let's just take this person with a big cold call range, and we're running out of flop. So say ace eight five, and it runs through right here statistics. So if you want to see like how many combos of top pair there are in this range, just highlight right over top pair. Notice on the left shows all the combos that hit it, and also how many there are. So twenty four combos in there. So and if you only wanted to say you thought this person would only continue with something like top pair plus. Then you just untick that and untick all the ones that don't matter. And this number down here is what percentage of the range has been hit. So if you think if he bets and we raise and you think he'd only continue with top pair plus, then he's only continuing 16% of the time, which is obviously great for us. means we're getting a lot of folds, assuming that we want them, of course. So go back, retick all the stuff that I normally keep in. Blah. Okay. So let's first walk through a quick example and kind of show you how this can be useful. So take a situation right here. Say we steal, you call by the small blind, and see this heads up flop. So say we're deciding whether or not we want to see about this. So we have ace of hearts, ten of spades, and I always forget the flop. So king, spades, six, doesn't really matter. Just rainbow. Perfect. Okay, so let's say we want to say the person, the small blind in this hand, is going to be a pretty tight guy. So we think he's pretty much flouting a, a pretty tight range, so we'll take out some of these suited connectors. Oh, also, the cool thing is you can add weight here. So say you want to weight something 50%, just drag this down to 50, tick on it. If you see that little green arrow in the corner, or at least I think it's green, I'm colorblind, uh, that means that the hand is weighted 50%, which is really cool. And you can weight it you know, as much as you want to. Um, I don't use, I use weighting in some of my things, but normally I just keep, keep things pretty static. So say we're trying to run this through and see how often this person would logically continue. We think he would probably continue with something like middle pair plus, probably pretty fair. Um, so things like, you know, anything sevens to jacks, obviously any top pair, any, uh, sets, those things are continuing. If we thought he was going to continue with weak pairs as well, then we can just tick that and we can just kind of see what hit, happens down here. But we'll just say that he's going to continue with middle pair plus, so we see that's happening roughly 45% of the time, which means that if we bet, he's going to fold 55% of the time. Now, this is, of course, just assuming pure black and white. This assumes that he folds when he misses, and he only continues when he hits, either by check raising or by just check calling. Now, obviously, it's totally up to you to decide if this person's going to, say, start bluffing some hands and bluffing some frequency. And say you think he's going to bluff, say, 10% of the time, okay? And obviously, in this situation, we're purely bluffing. We don't really get called by a lot of second-best hands. 
So all we care about is does he fold enough of the time to, for us to show a profit? And say we think he's going to check raise as a bluff 10%. So range hits 45. We add 10% to that, so say 55, which means we're still getting the fold overall 45% of the time, which is still profitable if we put a half pot bet out there. Half pot has to work a third of the time to show profit. We expect it to work around 45, give ourselves about 10 point buffer, which is obviously pretty good for us. And these are things that you want to do in your off session analysis. You know, you, you, these are things you don't want to do real time. You don't want to do this while you're playing. You don't have the time, the energy, and especially if you're playing multiple tables, you just can't be doing that. But this is really, really helpful when you're doing off session analysis and you're trying to figure out, you know, is this CBAC going to be profitable? Is this CBAC not going to be profitable? Um, how how does it tweak if someone's range was, say, wider? So give this guy the idiot range. Okay, now we notice that he starts hitting way less, and just because the combos that he has are pushed towards stupid hands that just can't continue very much. So it's a really, really nice program in that regards. It makes things very, very simple, and obviously you can work with different textures, see how like a double Broadway texture works and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, I, like I said, this is probably one of the biggest programs that I use for off-session analysis, but I've also become very, very familiar with it, and I, I just like using it. So if we go back to the example we were working on, so King 6-3, and give him, let's say, whatever we, we gave him. And we think that he's hitting whatever and continuing, what, about 55% of the time? I'm sorry, 45% of the time. So say we're thinking that, and then we're, say he calls, we bet, he calls, blah, blah, blah. And then we're starting to figure out, okay, do we want to double barrel any cards if he checks to us on a turn? Well, let's say the turn card's a queen. Okay, and we think on the flop he would have continued with this, and obviously this, and obviously the sets, and we discount the sets a little bit just for the times that he would have check raised them rather than going for the check call, and give him maybe a hand like that or two. Okay, so in this range we're trying to figure out would he continue if we decided to go for the double barrel. So in this situation we assume that he'd probably only continue with something like top pair plus. Um, and, you know, he's not always going to continue with it, but he'll definitely continue pretty much always. So we're just always, when you're doing these calculations, always use worst case scenario. Just, it's easier that way. You know, always just assume the worst will happen because, well, it does. So we give him all this, tally it up. See, he's hitting about 50, I'm sorry, 50% of the time. So he's folding about half the time, assuming he plays totally straightforward, aka folds his weak hands, continues with his strong hands. So if we bet half pot on a queen, we're actually expecting to get enough folds to make profit there. So that's actually not a bad, bad little situation. Um, you know, and all this is just very, very easy. We just add in board, add in dead cards, his range, blah, 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 and go forward from there. And whereas if the turn card came at jack, it's a little bit worse. Turn card comes at 10, a lot worse. Uh, you know, baby cards, all of a sudden it gets a lot worse. So again, it just kind of helps you visualize these little spots that come up often. But if you can kind of treat your, if you can start to visualize real time, kind of how you would work this exact hand, it's going to help you on the table significantly. Just being able to visualize quickly, and this is what I like about this program, just allows me to quickly see where things lie, you know, where his, where his range really is. Um, and again, this is just things that I do off the, off table. And I use this uh, quite a bit for this kind of stuff. All right, so blah, 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 rambled about that enough. All right, so a couple other ways we can use this. We can also use this for preflop stuff. So say we have 8-7, and we're trying to you know, figure out how often we hit things post-flop. This is pretty cool, so I just go here, and it calculates how often we hit certain things post. So say we only care the times that we catch top pair plus, and you know some draws and that kind of stuff. See, we're hitting about 30% of the time, which is pretty good. Uh, if we... Uh, also add in the times that we catch other pairs, so weak pairs, middle pairs, that kind of stuff. You see we're smashing about half the time. So half the time we're going to have some sort of pair or some sort of draw that's worthwhile. So that, that's not too, too bad. And this is something that we definitely want to be paying attention to. So times that we're considering maybe calling a raise in position with a suited connector. You know, if our opponent is hitting strong enough enough of the time, and we're hitting strong enough enough of the time, we can probably consider going to war with that. Um, so we can also do this with, with ranges. So say we did a knit from early position, just give him a really tight range, and we want to see how often he hits post-flop. Okay, so we see he's hitting over pairs almost a third, uh, sets about 8% of the time, 
So he's hitting, you know, relatively strong, but you notice that he's not missing very much, which is very, very important. So he's hitting, you know, ace high is about 20%, weak pair is about that. So the, this is really, really important to see and visualize how often this guy is going to be hitting post-flop if he's hitting enough of the time to justify. Or, even better, let's say he had a wider range. Uh, I don't know, give him something like that. Put in some of those, give him some ace-queens. Okay, give him the king queen as well, sure, and calculate it. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, and we see all of a sudden now he's not hitting the strong every time. Now he's hitting top pair plus about 25. So he's hitting top pair plus, give or take. Yeah, just untick it all because I can't count very well right now. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, so he's hitting top pair plus about a third of the time. So if you think that he were going to see that his entire range almost always, you could have a plan pretty much to float him every single time, as long as you know how he plays post-flop. Um, and again, just little things you can do to visualize how often he's going to hit, also how often you're going to hit, with the, either hands like suited connectors, or how your range hits post-flop, do you hit strong enough, is that good, is that bad, blah, blah, blah. And again, just all made very, very simple when you're messing around with this program, and like I said, I, I use this program a ton. Um, so I ended up talking to the guy that made this program and sells it, and he said that uh, if you, pretty much if you try to buy the program and let him know that I sent you, uh, you can pretty much have it for, I think like 15 bucks as opposed to the normal 25 sticker price. So if you're interested in that, definitely take advantage of it, but um, just overall, very, very good program. Uh, like I said, I use it a ton. I think it's definitely worthwhile, and I also make nothing uh, <laughs> off the discount that you get, so it's not even like I'm getting any kickback for it. Uh, I'm just doing this because, one, I think the program's fantastic, and I try to support people to make good software, and two is that I think it's extremely beneficial for anybody that's trying to improve, especially in the visualization process. Um, so yeah, hopefully you, you know, get something out of this video. It's not the most in-depth thing in the entire world, but you know, as long as you, as long as it helps you see anything, that's definitely, definitely, definitely very, very important and very, it's going to be very helpful for you. You know, just mess around with the program a little bit, see if you like it. I think there's a trial on it. Um, yeah. And like I said, you can run through pretty much any problem that you have. This will definitely help or at least get you a baseline of information. So, like I said, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, you know, good luck with Flopzilla if you decide to get it, and good luck uh, visualizing, you know, all the little spots that you need. So, enjoy. Have a good one, guys.